Hallelujah. Praise God. How you doing, sis? Oh, wonderful. Hallelujah. Can you turn this down? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that glitter? Glitter, glitter? In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So much beloved. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of announcements before we get started. Um, after service, we are going to be packing um, uh, Christmas presents for the ladies that are uh, in this season in the in jail. So uh, we invite you. To stay afterwards. If you can't, listen, it's all good. Say it with me, it's all good. Oh, Come on, say it like it, it's all good. Oh, huh? it ain't no hard feelings, right? It, it ain't no hard feelings. Praise God. I mean, if you can, you can. If you can't, praise God. There's the next time. Amen. Hallelujah. But um, we're going to be doing that. There's um, 13 ladies, and we're just so excited as far as um, just blessing them. Thanks, Mom, Dad, for um, spearheading this. Praise God and leading to the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a, a youth fundraiser. You saw the bear. I pray you see the bear. Is the bear up there? Right <laughs> now. <laughs> the bear up there. The bear up there. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Uh, <laughs> hit the miss. Uh, out. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> I need to have a nice time. He's like, you don't even know what you're talking about. What was it? Hit it. Swing and a miss, Gabriel. Swing and a miss. Uh, but um, a ticket is a dollar. <laughs> Love you, brother boy. A ticket is a dollar, and all the proceeds go to our youth fund. As you guys know, with this distraction that the enemy's trying to, you know, be so stupid. We have Lord Jesus Christ. We're covered by the blood. Amen. Nothing. You come against us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So uh, we, we encourage you to do that. Um, the drawing will be on the 20th, uh, praise God, and that's the Sunday before Christmas. Um, you will have to be in church to win your bear. I mean, I'm just being straight up with y'all. Praise God, you have to be here to win your bear. So when we pull the number and the ticket is red and you're at home, you don't got a bear. Are, are we cool? You don't got a bear. We're going to go to the next one because guess what? That's how we're selling the tickets, so don't get crazy. Brother Brandon, we never crunch you, amen? So, say it with me, you have to be here to get your beer. Praise God, we made it on. Hallelujah, it's like a um, glory to God. <laughs> on that note, let's please, all please stand, praise God, be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Elder Lance is going to open us in prayer, and um, we're just so excited, so happy to be in God's house, amen? amen. Take it away, Elder. Amen. 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 
small little difference, but okay. The eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Lord Jesus Christ has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. You are already clean because of the word Lord Jesus Christ has spoken to you. For even Lord Jesus Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For what Lord Jesus Christ received, Lord Jesus Christ passed on to you as of first importance, that Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. Can I get an amen? Is that not a, is that not a beautiful love letter? And that is directly from the Word of God, and this leads us into John 21. And this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. We're going to go into the first two verses, then we're going to break away into the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 10, we're going to reflect back when Lord Jesus Christ called on the first disciples. On Peter, on James, and John, right? And so, we're going to look at the storyline, but we're going to... Remember, Holy Spirit, I pray, family, that you just come and just bless God. Amen? Amen? Listen, God knows what you're going through, right? God knows what the bank account looks like. God knows about the broken car. You pray for us. <laughs> right? Amen? And you guys too, right? I heard about that first year from, from oh my gosh, from Harrisburg? Bardstown? First year is all the way down. Praise God. His angels are all around us. Amen? Amen. God knows about the children that are, you know, right? God knows everything. And right now, all Lord Jesus Christ is asking of us is, will you make him enough? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you make the Lord Jesus enough? Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, go to the house of God, right? That's the only Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say the only Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. See, no matter what happens in our lives, that's the bottom line. It's only Jesus. Right? Amen. 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 Don't you love that? Only Jesus. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go back into John 21. We're going to finish up in verses 6 through 10. Y'all ready? Say amen. amen. Praise God. When we finish, Brother Mason, there's a surprise at the end. You like surprises? I love surprises too. Hey, have you ever received a surprise that went like this? No, right? Right? So it's not just me, right? When you receive a surprise, aren't you like, ah, yay! Oh my goodness, right? I like that movie Elf. Right? Oh, I love that movie Elf. Tomorrow morning, today I'm Santa's going, Santa! I know him! Right? Just a fool. And praise God, I choose to be like that with the Lord Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. I, mean, I know him, right? But then he, he knows us. Praise God. And we're going to have a surprise for the end. John 21, verse 4. Remember, this is the third time Lord Jesus Christ appeared after being risen. Amen? And now he's showing himself, hallelujah, he's showing himself back to his disciples. Who? Oh. Say it with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Just the magnitude of that, right? The glorified Lord Jesus Christ, the great I am. Agape, hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And just walking on the seashore. Can you imagine how hell was just trembling every footstep of our God? I really need us to embrace this right now. I really need us to embrace this right now. I can't even, I can't even move. God says you need to rest in this. Glorified, resurrected, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Brandon. Resurrected, glorified, perfect. The name of every day, our Lord, our Savior, the one who is coming soon in that trumpet glory to come back for us and receive us unto him. He's walking. And could you imagine all of hell saying to himself this one, oh my gosh, we messed up. Just walk. Just 
his walk. I don't care where you walk. In the name of Jesus, you have the same footsteps as the mighty God because Christ lives in you. And every time you take that step in Jesus' name, all of hell is saying, oh my gosh, they're walking. They're walking. And they're walking with power and authority. They're walking because Jesus Christ is Lord. They're walking because the anointing of resurrection power of Holy Spirit is in them. They're walking. And I pray in Jesus' name, every footstep, all of hell has to flee in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a new season. He's coming too. Listen, I'm so blessed and honored to be, to be planted here, rooted here in God's holy church. It has nothing to do with Joey, John, Lance. They have nothing. It's all about Lord Jesus Christ. And when we make our life and our worship all about Lord Jesus Christ, listen, look at you guys. You guys are standing in His presence and you're like, oh my goodness. Holy Spirit say, mine. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit says, mine. Amen. And when Holy Spirit is here, guess what? He unifies His body. He said, this is this is my body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Say with me, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Help me be Take the Father. Hallelujah. Give that praise. Amen. <laughs> Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? Mason, hear this? Here's Lord Jesus Christ asking the disciples, did you catch anything? Any fish? Right? And they said, no, we already knew it. I'm so proud of you. You said, no. You didn't catch nothing. You didn't catch nothing but a cold, right? I remember that when I was little. <laughs> no, they answered. Don't you love it when you reflect back when you first met Christ? See, God wanted to open in this love story that we just read from the Word of God. And this is how I encourage every beloved child of God. Regardless if you just got saved, maybe tonight, I pray so. I pray somebody on Facebook, amen? I pray somebody on Facebook. Praise God, I know any of you here, Hallelujah, we're all church family. I pray somebody on Facebook goes, I want to walk with that authority. Amen? I want to walk with that authority. Guess what? Facebook, it only comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? I pray we receive him, hallelujah. And he'll bless him with that anointing, hallelujah. He'll bless him with that anointing. And I love reflecting back when we first met. This is one of the things that we discuss always in premarital classes, hallelujah. Not only in premarital classes, but also in classes where marriages are falling apart. Praise God, there's, not, there's no, no couple here at Open Arms Community Church that's in that season. We know a couple that are asking for counseling. And one of the things that really help when you're trying to rebuild your relationship is tell me about the time when you guys first met. You see, the beauty is it goes from, oh, he's good for nothing, and oh, she just did nothing, did nothing. And then when you say, tell me about when you first met, well, you know, I just saw him looking at me over there, and he winked at me, right? Right? And it, 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 just, it just breaks everything, right? <laughs> Sister Ash is like, oh my God. Right? Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Trish did this to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right? But, but I love this in a beloved child of God that I'm a firm believer because it happened to me for many years. I got religious. And that's what the devil hopes. That you get religious in your own mind and it's called pride. Amen? Seriously, it almost destroyed me here. Ask Elder Lance, ask the elders, ask Pastor. But praise God, they prayed for me. Kept speaking life. Help me. Right? Help me. Beloved church, now I just need to confess this to you. I may not know how to be a friend. I may not know how to be a good brother or a, a, a good supporter. I may not know how to do all these things, but this is why God made the church. Amen? I may not be a good, good enough pastor for you, but that isn't a reason why you should just leave. Look how many pastors we got. We got Pastor John back there. We got Joey. We got David. We got Lance right there. We got William. But see, this is the body. Say with me, body. This is the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We got PJ right there, right? He's only a few years younger than me. But if you want someone younger, you're 
for the people that feel. Yeah. I got to speak live, right? <laughs> right? But when we first met, and this takes us back to when the Lord Jesus Christ, if you guys recall, he came out of the wilderness, right? Of course, we, we, we study that, we read that in Matthew 4, right? And after the wilderness, after he laid the smack is down on Satan, right? Letting the smack is down, that was it for Satan, right there and then, right? He went out, being led by the Holy Spirit again, because Holy Spirit in him, agape, agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ said, now it's time to get my disciples. Right? And what did the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit led him. And here you see this picture. I love pictures. I love visual aids. And Lord Jesus Christ, you could just see him watching the fish. And if you guys recall the story, if you guys recall the story, he was, and he asked him, you guys catch anything? No. They're bad fishermen, aren't they? They don't be catching nothing. You know what I'm saying? They don't catch nothing. But they're out there, right? And I love this because Lord Jesus Christ told them in verse 10. Yeah. And, and, and thank you for saying it. Let's back up because Brother David reminded me. He said, cast out into the deep, right? And what happened? Put in Jesus. Come on, brother. He did preach, right? And then he asked himself, what happened to the net? Right? It started to tear, right? And I'm so thankful the Holy Spirit asked Brother David to speak that out loud, amen? Because right here, this is how worship is, amen? That that is symbolic of the law is not good enough. You see, the fish that was caught in that net, there was imperfection in the law because it wasn't fulfilled. Can I repeat that? The, sim the symbolism behind the fish, we are the fish. Amen. Amen. Amen? But the symbolism of that net tearing means that under the old covenant, it wasn't going to save us. It wasn't going to save us. And then we go to verse 10 where he said, Do not be afraid, for now on, from now on, you will fish for people. Mason, you hear me? You will fish for people. Well, Brother Mason, how do you fish for people? Let me ask you something. If I wanted you to be my friend, would I be like this to you? Would you want to be my friend if I looked at you like this all the time? Let me ask you something. How come church people look like that? You've been a Christian how long? And you look like this? You look up to me. Right? I love you so much. But let me ask you, Brother Mason, would you be my friend if I looked at you like this? Right? And that's who our Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen? Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ was like, don't worry about the fish. I'm going to make you fishermen of men. Okay? So let's get back to John. Amen? John, there's our glorified Lord Jesus. One of my favorite pictures. I got it on my, my, my screenshot at home. For those of you who, I pray you do, if not, that's between you and God, but for those of you who, you know, go into our online services, because praise God, we're here Wednesdays and Sundays, but there's other things going on too, amen? Amen. Um, one of my best, one, one of my things that I love doing that God told me and he wants me to do is before the camera comes on or even when the camera comes on, just wait. Yeah. Right? And I originally, <laughs> Brother PJ, originally I had trouble with that, right? Because if this is all new, and you guys know, we learned a lot this past year, 2020. Amen? In this past year, 2020, I said, why am I doing this? And then God said, could you imagine what Lord Jesus Christ looked like when he was calling on his disciples? And then, that time, I pulled up this picture online, and I was like, that's such a cool picture. Amen? Amen? And let's get right into it. Lord Jesus Christ said, throw your net on the right side. Let me pause right here. Let me pause right here. If there's a right side, I don't know, me too, praise God. I, I, I love worshiping, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit filled, amen, we're one, amen. If, there, 
If there's a right side, there's a wrong side, right? If there's a God, there's a... Right? If there's good, there's... Right? If there's soft, there's... Right? I mean, let, let's be clear on this, amen? If there's man, there's... Right? There is no in-between. How stupid is that? It's the devil. Did that preacher just say stupid? Yes, I'll say it again. Stupid. Don't entertain stupid. It's contagious. Rebuke it. It's the devil trying to bring confusion and gray area, right? It's like saying, well, there's no right and there's no left. There's just in between. Last time I checked, if there's no hot, no cold, no cold, then you're lukewarm. What does God do with you? God says, I will spew you out. Either be hot or cold. Amen? So say, let's just say this again. If there's wrong, there is right. See, right now, God is asking us right now in worship, will we cast our thinking on the right side? What is the right side? His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Amen? Amen? Isn't it beautiful? This is so simple. I, it's all Holy Spirit. I'm not smart enough to do this, okay? Left side of the Bible. Old covenant. Old testament. Right side. Jesus. Hallelujah. New testament. And this is the new baptism. Hallelujah. This is the baptism saying, I died. 
about Bible verses, you know. It don't matter about the messages you preach. It don't matter about none of that. All that matters is, are you in it, right? Brother Pete, you just did it. Are you in it? Are you completely saturated? Remember what God taught us with the gym that Brother Joey blessed us with, right? Remember that gym that they... Last time I checked, when you go fishing, do you just wait to jig above the water? Here, fishing, fishing. Huh? We ain't gonna wait no tournament like that, right? That jig has to go in the water. Hallelujah, that jig has to go in the water, right? Amen. Say it with me, I jump in the water. Hallelujah, jump, jump in the water. Jump, 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 jump. Verse 8, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. And they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a far. Say it with me, a far. Far. Oh, the they saw a far burning coal there with fish on it and some bread. Ain't that just like our God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You are disciples of the Holy Spirit. You are beloved children of God. You are property of Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't just clothing that we wear, right? This is this is for us to let the whole world know. I belong to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And He's coming back for His property. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! You ever forget something at Walmart? I've done it many times, right? You forget something at Walmart? All the time. I get in trouble all the time. Now I'm to the point where I just keep spinning the thing. Right? I keep spinning it and make sure all the bags are empty because I, knew, I keep forgetting things, right? Spinning that thing. But when you forget it, right? And you call them and I forgot a bag. You go back, right? When you go back, what do you got to show them? The receipt, right? Amen? Hallelujah. Aren't we so blessed that Lord Jesus Christ is our receipt? Amen. That Lord Jesus Christ said, yeah, I paid for it. It's right here. Amen? Amen. It's right here. Amen. Amen. Right? It's right here. When they saw it, they saw the fish and some bread. And I love this picture right here. And they're just chilling, hanging out. And then Lord Jesus Christ said, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Why in the world would Lord Jesus Christ ask for more fish when there's fish right there, right? So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged it at the shore, and it was full of large fish. 153 to be exact. But even with so many, say this with me, church, the net was not torn. Hallelujah. You see, the anointing of God is simply this. That Lord Jesus Christ started his relationship with, with his disciples, saying that, yes, you guys are fishermen. But you're no longer going to fish for that. You're going to fish for men. Amen. Amen. You're going to fish for men. You're going to fish for men, and the way you're going to fish for men is I'm going to make you a bait. Amen. So right now, God right now is examining your heart. Are you a bait for Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you a bait for Christ? Amen. Remember, God's beloved child right here, Mason. I asked Mason, would you be my friend? Would you, would you be invited to, to, to be in a relationship with me if I look at you like this? And he said no. Right? But then I asked him, would you be willing to be a friend with me? Or be open to have a relationship if I was like, and even right now he said yes. And I believe sometimes we get like this because this world is so hateful. This world hates us, family. If your mission in life is trying to be accepted by the community, by this world, Guess what? The Word of God says you're an enemy of God. If you try to be a friend of this world, you're an enemy of God. But would you rather not have Lord Jesus Christ as your best friend? Amen. Right? And His Spirit to live abundantly in and through you? Say it with me. God loves me. God loves me. You see, what took place is, is that in the beginning, He called the disciples, said you're going to be fishermen of men. They lived a great, abundant life together in ministry. Right, Pastor? For, for, for three plus years, right? They got to sleep with Jesus, right? They got to just eat with Jesus. They got to walk with Jesus. They got to just hang out, right? I mean, just hang out, talk. Like the picture that you guys just saw, 
on. Let me just back up real quick. And you can just imagine as far as just the camaraderie, the fellowship, right? You can just imagine as far as where they were at in their relationship with Lord Jesus. But see, there was something missing, Brother Brandon. That something that was missing was they did not receive the fact that Lord Jesus Christ is not just a man. He is a God. Amen. He represented, say with me, Father, Father Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the disconnection took place, you guys recall, when he went to the garden to cry out to God, can this, can this cup just pass? Well, whatever your will is, I'm going to do it. And I say this all the time, and I haven't said it in a while, I'm going to say it. I, I want to pray, believe with all my heart, that the blood that purchased me was that blood that he shed in worship. Amen. Not the blood that had to be forced out of him through the beating, but the blood that in the intimacy of the Father, crying out, that he would sweat drips of blood, and that blood would land on the ground and just shake all of hell. But you notice, even at that moment, Brother William, disciples, <laughs> fell asleep on him, abandoned him. And it comes to the point where he said, here comes my betrayer, the time has come, the hour has come. And it's just like our God, with all his mercy, grace, and love, that in his glorified body, that he would show himself of all places where? At the seashore. And here's the disciples, guess what? Going back to what they used to do. Back to the old. I charge you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, don't go back to the old. We've had a lot of brothers and sisters that fell away. And guess what? I don't judge them. I'm hurt. But I just pray for them. God is the one that's really hurt, right? But don't go back to the old way of life. There's nothing for you there. God is saying, look forward. Amen? Amen. You see, this love letter is just absolutely beautiful. Because here in verse 10 it says, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So caught back to the large fish, 153. And then there's this thing that, this love letter that Holy Spirit had me read to you. The anointed Holy Spirit is beyond us. Anybody that is rooted here, we are all one, right? We're all one church family. You guys know what I'm talking about. His presence is just overwhelming. And I, I encourage you that no matter what life brings your way, don't fall away. Amen? Honestly, may I say something to you? If things are coming against you, it's because you're doing something right. If the devil is just trying to distract you, and guess what? You just stay rude. Amen. Amen? Don't go nowhere. I love you. I love you. I pray you know this. I love you. Pastor, I love you. Lance, I love you. Elder, I love you. Listen, I can't say this stuff. I love you. But it doesn't mean that my love is agape love. It's, it's, it's a fallen, I, I, I sin every day. I'm not perfect. But don't hold my imperfection against me or against the leader or against the, the past years ago that this person said this. Did Lord Jesus Christ not do enough? Amen. Only look at Lord Jesus Christ and I guarantee your life will be gooder and gooder because it doesn't matter what a leader does. It doesn't matter what a pastor says. It doesn't matter because you serve a perfect God and he knows your heart. Amen. And all God is asking you to stay rooted. Stay rooted. Don't let the enemy take you away. Please, family. Don't listen. I see, I see God moving so many families. And all it takes is for one person's feelings to get hurt. And then you see it happen. One fall out. The next thing you know, the other fall out. And then another fall out. Then the mom and dad stop coming and everything. You know why? It's, it's a domino effect. And the entire time, Lord Jesus Christ is saying, did I not do enough for you? So you have homework tonight before we close. And we're going to close.
folks here in the next couple minutes. You have homework tonight. Say with me, I have homework. I have homework. The homework tonight is that you're going to reach out to your family and friends. The area of your influence. Can you say it with me? Area, area of my influence. Which means you have family and friends. That guess what? They're playing this scary game with God that they think they don't have to come to church anymore. I pray in Jesus' name that you reach out to them and get them here this coming Sunday. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now because Holy Spirit showed me already what's going to take place Sunday. And I'm going to tell you right now, you want, you want them here. I speak to everybody on Facebook. Listen, Facebook, beloved church family online. Listen, if you're here or around the area, come home. Amen. Amen. Say all together, family. Come home. Come on. Listen, enough of all this stuff. Enough of it. Let, just come on. We're thankful that you're on Facebook and supporting and blessing the ministry. But please, come on. Listen, I say this with all the fear of God in me. I cannot stand before Lord Jesus Christ and not tell God's people that you have to come to church. That you have to come together. There's going to be so many there are millions. God showed me today. There's millions of people that are going to be left behind thinking that they're saved, but they think that they don't have to have anything to do with fellowship in the church, with coming together. And God said, did I not give you a perfect love story? You see, what I wanted to share with you in the love story that I read to you, and I'm going to go over it quickly. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Keep watch on the wicked and the good. That's Proverbs. Say with me, one, five, three. One, five, three. Those who refuse to gossip, harm their neighbors, speak evil of their friends, say it with me, Psalms. Uh, one, one, five, three. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Luke, say it with me, one, five, three. One, five, three. You are already pleased because of the word I have spoken to you. Say it with me, John. Uh, one, one, five, three. Uh, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Say we Romans. Romans. One five three. One five three. And then we're going to close with this. For what I received, I pass on to you as the first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Say with me, First Corinthians. First Corinthians. One five three. One five three. Beloved Mason, I told you, Holy Spirit teaches, right? And does everything make sense? Hallelujah! It's all Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit's teaching us, right, that Christ died for our sins. And what God wanted to show in closing is this, is that what took place in our beloved gospel of the good news. Say with me, good news. Good news. Hey, Mason, when you hear good news, do you look like this? When you hear good news, how do you look? Hey, turn around and show everybody. Hey, turn around and show everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> The good news is this, that when Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, see, he went fishing. And this is go fish. This is go fish. What Lord Jesus Christ accomplished in those three days is the fruit of God's word right now. Every soul, every soul that has called out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he saved you. Amen. Will you bless God? Tonight, will you bless God tonight? Will you bless God and will you, will, will, will you just worship him in this next song? We only got one song that we're going to play. Amen. Amen. It's never for a pastor. I want to warn you, okay? There's, some, there's something going on in Open Arms Community Church that I want to rebuke right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This Holy Spirit said, do it right now. Because God is going to do it. Amen. Amen. If you start looking at other people coming to the altar Something's going on in your life that you need to review. This is between you and God. This isn't for anybody but our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you right now, it's a dangerous game to play. When I hear people say, well, why is that person going to altar? You know what I tell them? Why don't you mind your own business and worship God? Listen, I'll answer to the elders, but I'm just being serious. What they're doing has nothing to do with you. If you don't want to go to altar, just worship. But don't start looking at somebody else's worship life. Can I hear an amen? amen? I say this. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up, praise God. I say this to you because there's some of you too that want to come to the altar, but they
then you are concerned about what somebody else will think. Are you serious? Last time I checked when that trumpet sounds, when we're judged, we stand before Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear the amen? It doesn't matter as far as what people say or think about you. All that matters to me is what God says about you. Amen? And I'm just going to encourage you to do so. Amen? At this time, I'm just going to ask the elders, pastors, all of leadership to come up. Thank you, Pastor. No, I don't do this every time the Holy Spirit says, bring my leadership up because there's some of you that may need a prayer. And I know it's true because God asked me to get the leadership up here. We've already witnessed healing in somebody's shoulder today, before church even started. The miraculous anointing of God's presence is flowing right now. But beloved church family, I want to ask you to pray for your leadership. We have no idea what they go through. Believe it or not, I don't. God does. And I just ask you to pray for our leadership. Pray that God will just always cover them. Pray that the angels are always around them. And pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is always overflowing through them and their families. Amen? They're overseers of the church. And God says that when you bless them, oh, 